What's up you guys? It's Craig again, and today we're getting fit. And not this kind of fit, but financially fit. And today is your intro to my financially fit challenge. This is where we spend about 10 minutes per day getting financially fit. Let's go. And if you're just starting your financial fitness journey here, you're in luck because there are already so many lessons baked into 2020. And if you've seen any of the previous videos, you've already seen how much of a roller coaster the stock market is with jobs and recession. And today we'll be talking about what you need to know before you do anything with your money in this market. You'll wanna see this. We're gonna be talking about the three things to not do while investing in times of uncertainty. And we're also going to talk about one thing you must do throughout your whole investing career. Stick to the end and you'll find out what it is. But before we begin this financial fitness journey, put down your dumbbells, smash the like button, and let's go. Okay, okay, you don't have to smash it, just tap it, but I'll, I'll wait for you. You can even do a couple curls while we're waiting, but just tap it. All right, we're good to go. So remember, today we're going over the three things you should not do with your money and the one thing you absolutely must do. First, do not use the news as your investment advice and do not let headlines sway your emotions. Sure, we've talked about headlines in the past and we've talked about how they impact our emotions and how they impact our thinking and what we should do about it, but usually the answer is the same. And we'll get to that at the end, but just do not allow that to let you change course. One headline on one day will not really do anything to your portfolio in the long run. Now, if you're day trading, that may be a different story because let's face it, news affects stock prices in the short term. But especially nowadays when we have so many drastic measures being taken through the world, we have the Fed, we have the illness, we have protests and rioting and destruction. There is so much uncertainty underlying all of these events and there are so many headlines, and there are even many that you must question the validity. For example, the 2020 May jobs report reported a 2.5 million job gain. Yet, the following week, we supposedly lost 1.5 million jobs. And that 2.5 million, there was a misclassification error. How much truth is there to the headlines? And how much are the headlines trying to stir up your emotions? You have to consider that. So you guys got this, right? The first thing that you must never do is let the news, the headlines sway your emotions, causing you to panic sell or panic buy. That will lead to significant losses in your portfolio, especially when we're trying to hold long term or especially when we're trying to make money. All right, let's get to the second thing that you must not do. You should not trust anyone, not even me. Now, I said to not trust me. I definitely want you to like me. So go ahead and hit that. Hit that. Let's do it. And here's why. Let me tell you a story. You guys probably all know about the illness, about travel, about how airlines have stopped flying as much, how rental cars are not being used as much, how hotels are struggling. So the story goes, airlines haven't really been doing too well and neither have their stock prices. But if you follow the market, recently we've seen huge gains. And you know who once held airlines? Warren Buffett. I'm sure maybe you've heard of him. He's also known as the Oracle of Omaha, the Sage of Omaha, the CEO of legendary investment firm Berkshire Hathaway, and maybe even the greatest investor of all time. And back in 2016, Warren Buffett really liked airline stocks, just like you should like this video, just like you should like this video. And back in 2016, Warren Buffett bought a lot of airline stocks, including Delta, Southwest, United Airlines, American Airlines. And for good reason too, in 2019, the airlines posted their 10th straight year of profits. This makes sense, right? The greatest investor of all time makes another great move, par for the course. So back in March, 2020, Delta was burning $100 million in cash every single day, just keeping operations going. So Warren Buffett, known as being an unemotional investor, sold his airline stock for a huge loss. Warren Buffett sold his stock around early April and around early May, and he sold it at a significant loss. So let's do a little recap. Warren Buffett liked airline stocks. Warren Buffett held airline stocks. A black swan event came along. Delta was operating mostly in debt. They were burning a lot of cash and they had way too much inventory, way too many planes to upkeep in order to stay profitable. So 
So Warren Buffett looked into the future like he does as Oracle of Omaha and he sold. And of course, when Warren Buffett sells, that makes headlines. So when Warren Buffett sold, the stock went from about $22 all the way down to 19. And when Warren Buffett sells, the market experiences the Warren Buffett effect. The Warren Buffett effect is when he decides to buy or sell a stock, the whole market follows. Wow, Warren Buffett, the greatest investor of all time. He is making a move. I should probably make that move. I read countless articles that stated that when Warren Buffett sold, you should probably sell your airline stock too because he probably knows a little more than you, the average investor. Now, I don't know if you've seen the headlines recently, but airline stocks have been all the rage. Delta is up to $30. That's about a 36% increase. Buffett said that each of the top four airline stocks would have to borrow between 10 and 12 billion just to operate their business. Travel was at one point down 95% compared to the year prior. And the foresight was that even though people were itching to get out and go somewhere, have fun, there was still gonna be a physical space restriction per flight due to social distancing measures. So Buffett sold because there was too much debt and too many planes to upkeep, too much overhead, too much cost. But since Buffett sold, Delta has cut their operating costs in half. That's unbelievable. And then you combine that fact with the fact that May 2020 has been one of the most optimistic stock investing months in recent history. And yes, that equation equals an airline pump. So this story ends with a man. Let's call him a public figure. Let's call him the president. And here's what Trump said. Warren Buffett sold airline stocks a little over a month ago. He's been right his whole life. But sometimes, even someone like Warren Buffett, I have a lot of respect for him, they make mistakes. And Trump goes on to add, of course, they should have kept airline stocks because the airline stocks went through the roof today. And I don't really have too much to say on this one. It's really just some fun banter between two of the most powerful men in the world. And yes, the lesson learned here is that even Warren Buffett makes mistakes. And then you have Carl Icahn, another titan, a legendary investor. Who is Carl Icahn and what did he do? Just know he's very rich and he invests very well. Carl Icahn was an investor in Hertz. He started buying the company back in 2014 and he believed in them until the very end, until they filed bankruptcy, until the New York Stock Exchange told them that they would be delisted. Even back in March, when the travel outlook was pretty bad because of the illness and social distancing measures, Carl Icahn purchased $84.8 million. $84.8 million. Worth of Hertz rental car at around $8 a share. This made his investment $2.3 billion in total since 2014. When Hertz was notified that they would be delisted from the New York Stock Exchange, Carl Icahn sold his shares at 72 cents. But Carl Icahn's move seems reasonable. You might as well sell out of the stock before it's worth nothing, right? Carl Icahn got $0.04 billion back from his $2.3 billion, making it a 98% loss. He is a billionaire and a legendary investor. But Hertz Rental Car appealed the delisting and now its stock is soaring. Hertz shares have rallied from the lows of 60 cents up to $5.50 per share and now hover around $3. During this appeal process, they're not going to be delisted from the stock exchange. So yes, 2020 Carl Icahn and 2020 Warren Buffett, two of the most iconic legendary investors, pulled the same move. They both sold at a huge loss. They could have held just a little bit longer and had a lot more of their money back. So even though the Carl Icahn and the Warren Buffett situations were very different, it just goes to show that even the best investors can make mistakes. And that's a lesson I want you to take away from this. But the story doesn't end here. And this is where 2020 investing gets even more absurd with the penny traders. You have no doubt heard of penny stocks. These are stocks that trade for less than $5 per share and are typically associated with speculative trading, gambling, and at least where I grew up, losing a lot of money. But a lot of people, and especially millennials, are using them to get rich quick. And you know the two things that millennials love? Getting rich quick and their smartphones. And we have a marriage. Because guess what? The Robinhood app, free stock with my link down below, you can now be glued to your smartphone while you trade penny stocks 
while you get rich quick. This is a millennial's dream. So yes, thank you, Apple. And thank you, Robinhood, for making my dream come true. Because boy, anyone with access to a smartphone also has access to the Robinhood app. And that makes this value investing in bankrupt penny stocks like Hertz a good gig for me to get rich quick. And after Carl Icahn sold all of his Hertz, on June 3rd, retail investors like you and I use the Robinhood app to buy shares at trading at 82 cents to go all the way up, ride the rocket ship, all the way up to $5.53 per share. That is an astronomical gain. What's more is that $5.52 per share, that was achieved on June 8th, a five-day period, to multiply your investment by seven. Even more absurd, the US Bankruptcy Court of Delaware, they allowed Hertz to sell $1 billion more of stock to retail investors like you and I. Selling $1 million more of stock just prolongs the appeal process, giving Hertz still yet another chance to keep their business running as they operate on the cash they still have on hand. Okay guys, I wanna make sure that we get this straight here. I am not recommending at all to buy Hertz stock. I am just illustrating how crazy the uncertainty and the action and emotion of people has made 2020 stock market investing. And this just goes to show that in 2020, seemingly anything can happen in the world and seemingly anything can happen in the stock market. And the third thing that I absolutely do not want you to find yourself doing is sitting back and doing nothing. Even in investing, when you feel like you missed the boat because airline stocks already went up, you already missed the Hertz pump and dump, and what, you missed it. That, I did too. Because there are incredible opportunities each and every day. You can't be looking back and saying, ah, oh, the airline's already pumped and dumped. I knew I should have bought them. I knew it, I missed it. And now there's no way I'm gonna get rich quick like all my friends. But trust me when I say, each day presents itself with opportunities. Even if you lost your job, this is a great time to build skills, network, and if you haven't already, check out my video on Side Hustle. That will set your mind straight on what to do and take your next step or getting the job you love. Do you have a skill? Can you learn a skill and offer it for free to someone that needs it? Because you will get on their radar and they will wanna hire you. Just negotiate with them. Say, hey, I wanna try this out. I wanna work for you for a month. I'll even do it for free. Let me try it for a month. Let me show you what I can do. And if you like it, you can hire me. Negotiating is that simple. And as far as stock market investing goes, 2020 has not only been one of the most uncertain times in history, 2020 presents a very opportunistic market, especially if you know how to hedge your bet. The stock market can move significantly up with the Fed pumping money into the economy month after month, day after day. But the stock market could also fall significantly if that optimism turns into pessimism because the economy still is struggling. Businesses still are struggling. There just isn't enough demand. If you can take time to get educated about the risks and strategies to prevent loss of money, 2020 can be a very opportunistic time for you, even amidst all the volatility. And now we get to the one thing you need to do, and that is invest consistently with discipline over the long term. Because you don't want to mimic Warren Buffett 2020, Carl Icahn 2020, exposing yourself to fear, uncertainty, doubt, pulling out too quickly, jumping in at the wrong times, putting money out there, putting money in at the stock market highs, taking it out at the lows. You don't want to be that person. And that's why you're working on your financial fitness. That's why you're here with me on YouTube. So remember, I already told you not to trust me. I want you to like the video, but you don't have to trust me. I want you to do your own research. I want you to collect data from me, from Warren Buffett, from anyone you follow on Twitter, anyone you follow on YouTube. I want you to collect the data and then formulate your strategy from there. Get educated and build a strategy. But ultimately, I do hope that strategy is dollar cost averaging where you invest with discipline consistently over the long term. Because investing in times of uncertainty, you don't know which way the market will move. And don't let me tell you, let the data tell you. Dollar cost averaging has consistently outperformed buying the dip or timing the market, as people say. So this is the start of your financial fitness journey. We're gonna be diving more into each one of the topics that I talked about already. And guys, I really wanna thank each and every one of you for watching. I know this is a lot of time that you guys are spending with me and I really hope you're learning something. If you are, please let me know. And if you haven't already, please strike the like button for the YouTube algorithm because that's gonna help me be seen by more people. If you like it, if you wanna hear more from me, just let me know with the comments and let YouTube know with the like button and subscribing. And I know today's video might have been a little bit heavy and a little bit straight, and not too funny, but I promise stick with us on this financial fitness journey. We're gonna have a blast, we're gonna have a great time. We're gonna laugh a lot, we're gonna learn a lot. 
And if you stuck it out this far, I just want you to let you know that I really, really appreciate you guys, and I hope you're doing really well, and I hope this, this time hasn't really been too stressful for you, even though it is stressful for all of us. I wish you and your family the best. Peace. And we're also seeing stocks go wild in 2020, because unlike in the global financial crisis when the Fed pumped money into the market and everyone was fearful, they didn't think the market was gonna rebound. They were so afraid. Unlike then, we have all these millennial investors popping open their phone, scrolling through Robinhood, seeing a bunch of green because the Fed's money, the Fed stimulus is bringing the prices up. All these millennials are seeing that, boom. These prices are low, I think they can go up too. They buy, 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 buy. Millennials are crushing it on Robinhood as the value investor. So am I saying that millennials are the new Warren Buffett? I'm not saying that, but maybe you could be hearing that. So am I saying that I'm like Warren Buffett? I'm not saying that, but again, you might be hearing that. Because there are incredible opportunities each and every day.